Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss how you can use our ODVA Ethernet IP explicit messaging driver to communicate with an Ethernet IP server. During this demonstration, I'll design a project in which a CMT3072XH will act as an Ethernet IP client and an IRETN as my Ethernet IP server. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that our ODVA Ethernet IP Explicit Messaging Driver, which I'll refer to as our Generic Explicit Messaging Driver, does not support EDS import. An EDS, or Electronic Data Sheet, is a description file that contains information related to the CIP objects. With that said, Wintech Labs has added several different device-specific Ethernet IP drivers to the latest iteration of EasyBuilder Pro. And we highly recommend that you attempt to find a device-specific driver before attempting to use our generic explicit messaging driver. Now, let's open EasyBuilder Pro, and as I mentioned, I'm going to be using a CMT3072XH during today's demonstration. And so I'll select my HMI, and upon opening a new project, our system parameters will be displayed. But if you're working in an existing project, then you'll need to select the Home tab in order to select and display the system parameters. Within our system parameters, I'll select New Device Slash Server, and next to Device Type, I'll select our drop down list. And within our search bar, I'll type ODVA and then click search. We have three different ODVA Ethernet IP drivers. However, the driver that I'm going to use within my project today is our ODVA Ethernet IP explicit messaging driver. So I'll select this driver and then click OK. Now we'll configure the IP address of our EIP device. To do this, I'll select the Settings button next to our IP dialog. And here I'll enter the default IP address of my IRETN, which is 192.168.0.212. Once finished, I'll click OK to close our Settings menu. And I'll select OK once more to save our current configuration. After adding this driver, I'll make sure that this device is selected within our device list. And just underneath this dialog, let's select the Tag Editor button. Within our Tag Editor, we'll need to configure the CIP objects associated with our IRETN. Object information and mapping can usually be found within the user manual for your device, but if this information is unavailable, you may need to reach out to the device manufacturer for assistance. With that said, let's refer to the user manual of our IRETN so that we can define our CIP objects. The Ethernet IP mapping of our IRETN and I.O. modules starts on page 14, where we'll find our identity objects. When mapping an object within our tag editor, we'll need an object's class code, instance ID, and attribute ID. With this in mind, let's create a tag for our vendor ID. To do this, I'm going to right-click Object Defined and select New Data Type. I'll name our group of objects as Identity. And I'll click Add at the bottom center and add our object. On the top right of our Data Member menu, I'll select the small button next to the Name Entry box. And within our pop-up, I'll configure our object's mapping. I'll call this object vendor underscore ID and configure our class code to 1, our instance ID to 1, 
in our attribute ID to 1, which again is specified within our IRETN's user manual. After which, I'll click OK to save this configuration, and within the following menu, I'll define the data type as unsigned integer, or uint. And then I'll click OK once more to save our tag. Now that we've finished adding our object, let's verify our tag by clicking OK in the bottom right corner. And with our verification successful, I'll click Exit and close our system parameters. And then assign an object to this tag. To do this, I'll select the Object tab and create a numeric object. Within our object's properties, I'll select the tag dropdown list under read slash write address. And then we'll select our tag within the pop-up window. Now that our tag has been assigned, I'll click OK at the bottom of our object's properties menu and place my object on our work area. Next, let's test communication to our IRETN by performing an online simulation. To do this, I've configured my PC so that it lies on the same IP subnet as my IRETN. And within Easy Builder Pro, I'll select the Project tab. And in the top left corner, I'll click Online Simulation. After which, I'll follow the prompts on screen to compile and simulate my project. With our simulation running, we're now successfully communicating to our IRETN through Ethernet IP. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.